Hi everybody, my name is Kaylee. I am a sophomore at the College of New Jersey where I am studying secondary English and special education and I wanted to tell you about why I chose TCNJ. So TCNJ was the first school I visited. I was not completely sold when I first came to campus. I knew it was a nice campus and all, and it had a great reputation, but I was really sold on going to like a huge school in like a city um, with like a big, big football school. I ended up getting into SUNY Cortland, Penn State, Udell, uh, Montclair, Monmouth, University of Pittsburgh, um, and Seton Hall. But in the end, I chose TCNJ because I just knew that it was the right place for me. It was the best choice logistically. And in the end, I love it there and I couldn't picture myself anywhere different. I also really wanted to go super far away from home. I just wanted something completely different from the town I came from. Um, I've lived in New Jersey since I was like seven. So I've been here for a really long time and I was thinking like I want to go to a different state. But since I am an education major, that's also something to think about when you're applying to colleges, because if you go somewhere really far from where you live, the chances are you're gonna end up teaching around there and there's different um, teaching certificates that allow you to teach in different states. So you wanna look at what that college will, where that college will allow you to teach. I am a secondary English and special ed major, which means that I'm gonna come out with a bachelor's in secondary education, which is I think seventh to 12th grade. So the upper end of the ages. Um, and I'm gonna have a specialization in English. And then I'm going to be there for a fifth year. It's a five year program. So I'm gonna get my master's in special education after five years, which is huge because getting a master's in education can take six to seven years. So by me staying five years and doing it straight, I'm saving a lot of time and money down the line. At TCNJ, I am also part of the Bonner Scholar Program, which is a program where there's about 80 to 100 students um, and we volunteer in the community of Trenton. So we do different kinds of volunteer work. There's about 13 different sites that all have different focus areas. My main site is the abilities team. So we do a lot of volunteer work with the Ark of Mercer. I'm also a part of the English National Honor Society it's called Sigma Tau Delta. I just got inducted, inducted into that. I'm also, I just joined <laughs> club volleyball right before the whole shutdown. So at TCNJ, about 93% of the students live in New Jersey and only about 7% are out of state. Um, I know a lot of people that live out of state, some even don't live in this country, some come from elsewhere, but the broad majority do come from New Jersey, which I hated the idea of, but in the end, I kind of realized that having so many people uh, who come from right around you is a good thing because they're gonna be there when you're on winter break. They're gonna be there where, when you're on summer break. You can even stay at the college, um, not on campus, but off campus, but you, you're gonna have a social life when school's not in session, which is a big deal because like four to five months, you're not gonna be in school. You can all just go meet up at TCNJ. It's like our midpoint. So. I'm able to go see friends there. I can drive up to TCNJ for a day if I want. When I'm trying to find a place to move in, a house to move in, I can just drive up there and go look at it myself. I don't have to drive four or five hours and I can just, on a whim, go, go. It's not, an hour's not that bad. Also, I didn't think I would get really homesick. I thought it would be fine, but a month or a month and a half in, I did start to get that homesick feeling where I just wanted to be home. Um, college is really energetic, so you're constantly doing stuff. And it was nice to have that option to come home, eat real home cooked food and sit on an actual couch and watch TV. You will learn how important those things are, how much they mean to you once you get to college. It's also nice to be able to drive home to just have a shower in peace by yourself, not in a communal, 
in a communal bathroom. That's not even a word! <laughs> even if it's for a day, you might want to go home to just see your family. You might want to go home for a birthday, a holiday. Some people who go really far can't even come home for our Thanksgiving because of the travel costs. So just think about that. If family's important to you, maybe you might want to stay a little bit closer to home. So I liked having the option. Another advantage is that people who come from New Jersey already know what there is in New Jersey. So you're gonna be able to like share your hometown. If your hometown has a parade going on this day, you can be like, hey, let's go do this. Or if, have, if you have a fair going on, you guys will know what goes on in New Jersey and you'll have places to go visit and you'll be able to share those places with other people. Whereas if you go five hours away, it might be harder to kind of bring your friends over and show them where you're from. If you're from out of state, TCNJ is a good option. They're looking for more out of staters to come to TCNJ and over 80% of the out of state students get uh, award packages. So you get money to your um, schooling so that it's more, the cost is more in line to the in-state costs. So TCNJ is about, I think it's like 23,000 a year is what they estimated um, on average with like awards and scholarships and stuff and financial aid, which is a pretty good deal considering some schools, like other schools that I applied to were like 60,000 a year. I would pay about three years of college with the same money I could pay going for one year of college at some other school. Another thing that I wasn't completely thrilled about is that TCNJ is kind of like in a suburban area. It's a really small campus. I thought it was tiny. I didn't want a small school. I like it now. It's kind of fun. You're still able to go off campus if you have a car you can, or you can take a bus or a train. You can get to places. It's not like you're stuck on campus. Just like if you were at home, you're gonna find places to go. It's not that bad. Plus having the opportunity to just walk to your class. Like my uh, residential hall was right in front of the Ed building. I lived in Centennial. So if I wanted to go to, Cent or wanted to, go to class in the Ed building, I could roll out of bed five minutes before class and make it there right on time. Not saying that I would, but you could if you had the option. So about 50% of students that apply to TCNJ end up being accepted, which is a pretty competitive acceptance rate. I think that TCNJ looks for very well-rounded students that have a decent amount of extracurriculars that are academically focused. If you maybe like aren't at the top of your class, but you have a lot of academics, TCNJ might be a good school for you to apply to. Um, even if you don't think that like you're smart enough to get into TCNJ, if you have a lot of um, volunteer work, a lot of involvement at your high school or in your community, that's something that TCNJ looks at. I said before, I'm a secondary English and special ed major. So this is where it gets a little bit complicated. So I am one of eight students in my grade with this major. We are a little cohort of students that was accepted. We were transfers into the major previously. Uh, my freshman year, I was technically a secondary English major, but I knew that I wanted to transfer into this five-year program. So I kind of manipulated my freshman year schedule so that I would be on course um, when I transferred into this major. I wouldn't have any courses that I needed to make up. This five-year program is now available to future students. What I really love about my program is how much opportunity we get to actually learn in the field. Unfortunately, I'm not really getting as much in-field experience as I would if I was on campus, um, but I had a practicum my spring semester of my freshman year, and I would have had one again this semester, my fall semester of my sophomore year, and I'm gonna have one again, a practicum in my spring semester. So you get so much experience in this program. A lot of colleges, you don't get to go step into a classroom until the spring of your sophomore or even like your junior, senior year. But for English classes, I really like the English classes. If you like English, you will like these classes at TCNJ. Um, 
don't be scared of the classes. Yes, they are hard, but they are hard in a good way. They are challenging. The teachers work with you. They care. They want to help you succeed. And that's another thing. The smaller class sizes at TCNJ is kind of a good thing. It's like the same class size you might have in a high school. Um, not that big, which is a good thing. And then you can talk to the teacher. You're not just a number, you're a name. And you can go to them after class. They're always available during office hours. If you need help, they will respond to an email within an appropriate amount of time. So the class, yeah, I like the class sizes, they're good. I definitely felt my freshman year, even after like the first couple of months that I was truly learning stuff and I was more knowledgeable than when I first stepped into that classroom. The teachers know what they're talking about, the professors, sorry. They're called professors now in college, if you wanna know but they know what they're talking about. You can tell they're very into their subject. They love what they teach. And when a teacher or a professor loves what they teach, they teach it well. So my freshman fall semester, I took linguistics and intro to poetry. Those were very good classes, very challenging. I did a lot of work. Um, I laugh at myself because I had like four courses my freshman fall and I thought I didn't have enough. I thought I needed more. That's false. I had plenty of work on my hands. Supposedly, um, each course you do 10 hours of out of class work. I don't think that's true. For some classes, you might do 10 hours of out of class work doing essays and reading and annotating. Um, but that just also largely depends on the professor. Also, something that's really helpful, I love to do, whenever we choose our courses, I use Rate My Professor. A lot of colleges tell you to not to. I think they're very accurate. I love seeing the students' responses um, to how they um, how they kind of vibe with the teacher, if you want to go with that. Something that's really big in the English classes at TCNJ, a lot of the courses are discussion-based, so you're gonna like read a text on your own and then you're gonna come into the class and you're gonna discuss it. The, te the professor's gonna help you walk is they're gonna help walk you through it and the peers you have in your class are gonna discuss it with you. A lot of the students at TCNJ, they're really helpful, inviting, you're all in this together type of feel. So I love that discussion-based classroom. It helps me to understand everything so much better. And then when I go and write an essay on that text, it's not that hard. English courses that they offer, a lot of them are in Bliss Hall. It's right there. Um, they're good, I, I, thumbs up. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about SPE courses that I've taken. One, my introduction to special ed, my freshman fall. I really enjoyed that class. They taught a lot of important things like person first language, what an IEP is, just all the foundational things that you're gonna need to know when you become a special ed teacher. I also took an SPE course this fall, uh, which was in conjunction with a literacy course. In the program I'm in, Bonner, we do these things called CEL. It's Community Engaged Learning. That's a requirement that you'll have to fill your freshman year. I don't think I had to do that because I was in the Bonner program, but we would have what we call CEL students come into um, some of the things we do in Bonner. So we would do this thing called Unified Learning. Uh, people from the ARC would come to TCNJ into a room in Forcina and we would teach lessons every Wednesday and someone different would teach the lesson each time but CEL students, students from TCNJ, either it's from their FSP course or there are some students even from special ed classes uh, on TCNJ at TCNJ they would come in and they would sit in and they would get to actively participate and help out with the lesson. So I felt like, I think that's a really cool opportunity. I really enjoy getting to be a part of running Unified Learning and I get so excited. Everybody does when we get other TCNJ students get to get involved with that as well. I was debating how in depth I wanted to get with this. Um, I decided I think I'm just gonna like tell you a little bit about where you would be living your freshman year. Something to recognize though, at the other colleges I went to see, I noticed you have to ask around because they a lot of the colleges give the best dorms to the freshmen because they want to bring in new students. Just because you walk into a college and they show you the nicest, newest dorms that they have, 
doesn't mean that you're gonna be living in those dorms the rest of your time at that college. TCNJ kind of goes the route of the older you get, the better dorms you have. So I'll, I'll be honest, when I saw the dorms at TCNJ, was not thrilled. It wasn't the nicest dorm I had seen on my college tours. They're not that bad. They're fine. Honestly, what's most important is the community around you. Freshman year, honestly, it's probably going to be the worst um, dorm, dorm quality you're going to get. And it's just going to be up from there. So the majority of freshmen are going to live in the towers. Um, it's called Travers and Wolf. Um, the two towers have those, those are their names. And in the middle, there's a little restaurant called T Dubs. Um, fun fact it's called T Dubs because T Dubs. Um, I toured them. They weren't very bright to me. They um, are co ed dorms. I haven't been in there that often, so I can't really give you um, a good evaluation. Uh, yeah, to be clear, I didn't live there my freshman year but there's 10 floors in Travers and Wolf. You definitely want to be on one of the lower floors because it does get really hot in there in the summer, but it's not, the heat isn't something that you really have to worry about because it's only going to be hot for like a few weeks during the whole year. A lot of people love their experience in the towers because it throws you into that freshman experience. If you want to be social, meeting people, constantly doing something, the towers is the place to go. However, it might be a little bit harder to kind of pull yourself away from all that action. So depending on the kind of person you are, uh, just know that maybe instead of studying in the towers, from what I've heard, it might be better to like go to the library or something. Uh, the other options, I don't know if you get to rank it. I think that I did rank which buildings I would like to live in my freshman year, but the other buildings you can live in are Centennial. That was my home. I love Centennial. Not everyone did. I thought it was great. Um, also Norsworthy, but that's the honor dorms. If you're a smarticle particle, hey, you're gonna be living there. And then finally, Abe. So this is Abe. I think I put that as my number one. I, 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 I don't know. I, I really wasn't in Abe that much either. I was in there to pick up my packages, but other than that, not so much. But the people that lived in Abe, they loved it. So that's my information on that. In Centennial, since that's the one that I know the most information about, it's kind of like a U shape. And the one, the lake side of the U is the girl's side and the side closer to the walkways, um, like the library is the boy's side. And then the bottom of the U is kind of like a common area. We had our lounge and like a hallway that had the game room, like a little social area with a pool table and a TV and a kitchen um, and the laundry room in the basement as well. Uh, the reason it's set up that way is not co-ed like the towers is because it's kind of an older building. So each floor has one bathroom. It doesn't have a boy girl bathroom. The left side has girls bathrooms. The right side has boys bathrooms. So that's why it's uh, one gender per floor. The girls side has three floors and the boys side has two. So there's more girls than boys in there. What I loved about Centennial is that I, one, I think the rooms are nicer and bigger. Um, two, huge windows. I took advantage, like, I did not realize how lucky I was to have such big, nice windows and a great view of the lake. So pretty. Loved seeing people. This is gonna sound so weird, but you gotta like people watch from your window because people are always running, biking, walking around the lake, fishing, stuff like that. So it's kind of fun to have that little area by the lakeside. Um, and then you can also go walk right out and take a walk by the lake. It's so nice. So I liked Centennial because of the community. Instead of the other buildings where you might get close to one floor, I felt like Centennial really had a tight knit community. You at least recognized uh, pretty much everybody that lived in Centennial. And a lot of people that didn't even live there were just there 24 seven because they liked the environment. And they were kind of like an adoptee to Centennial. Everybody thought that they lived there, but they slept somewhere different. Centennial also has great common spaces. Um, there's so many times when we would do an activity there, like the um, RA, no, CA, community advisors 
they're the older students that kind of live there with us and kind of show us the ropes. They would hold little activities for us like pumpkin carving, painting, um, other like little fun activities and they would host those. Sometimes we would have a movie night in the game room, but people were always hanging out there. So it was nice to have the opportunity. They also had this place called the classroom. It literally just looks like a high school classroom in the dorm building and it's the only air conditioned room. So we were in there a lot during the summer months um, and everyone would go to study there. And it was nice to have people around you to study with when you're up until three in the morning doing poetry annotations. For the bathrooms, I believe the majority of the freshmen buildings are communal bathrooms. So every floor gets their own bathroom that has like six sinks, six toilets, six showers. It wasn't that bad. I never had a problem getting a free sink, toilet, or shower. They were pretty much all open from what I could remember. And I kind of like pick my favorite shower that I would go to every time. Good water pressure though. I approve of that. Some other buildings though that you could live in after freshman year is Ike. That's one of the newer ones. That's the dining hall. Also, they have their own bathroom for each uh, double room. They're really new. It's like a hotel basically. You also have new res. Those also have your own personal bathroom. I looked around there. I wanted to live there last or this semester actually. Um, those are also very nice, not as new, but they're good dorm rooms. There's also Decker. This is kind of like a Jack and Jill style. Um, you have two doubles next to each other and they share a bathroom in the middle. You also have the townhouses. Those are newer places. Um, I'll put the floor plan up, but I believe it's like two rooms on the first floor, four rooms on the second floor, and four on the top floor. And uh, each floor has its own bathroom. And it's kind of like in a cool little community, which is fun. And then finally, Cromwell. I think Cromwell has the worst rep. Uh, I have never been in there. I have never, I don't think, uh, I knew one person that lived in there, but I didn't hear much about it. But that one's a bit smaller. Um, and it has three rooms that share a bathroom and each of those rooms is a double. So I think it looked like a nice bathroom from the pictures. You can go to this website if you want to learn more about the rooms. It also, a lot of them give you like the dimensions of the rooms, which I used when I was picking out like a carpet for it or something like that. For older students, Campus Town, it's a bit more pricey, but it's very nice apartments right over the shops in Campus Town and Hauserdorf and Phelps, which is an apartment kind of um, layout, kind of like Campus Town four rooms, uh, they have a bathroom, a kitchen, and a living room there. And then a lot of people, especially juniors and seniors, prefer to live off of campus. That's what I'm gonna be doing next semester. I'm gonna be moving into an off-campus house where you're literally just renting a house in the community. Um, I didn't realize how early people started renting their houses. So if you want a house, say, for your sophomore year, the October of your freshman year, you're gonna have to sign a lease to rent it or a lot of the houses are gonna disappear very quickly. But that's my quick overview. My quick overview. All right, so when, when you get to TCNJ your freshman year, you're gonna have something called Welcome Week where it's only the freshmen on campus pretty much besides a few other clubs that move in earlier. Um, and they're gonna have so many different activities for you. Every hour of the day, you're gonna have something to do. You're gonna obviously have some of those uh, assemblies that you go to, um, but that's the only time you'll really ever be with your whole class. But the rest of it, there's a lot. That's my dog. Um, but you're gonna have, so it was a lot of fun. I had a great time. You meet a lot of the friend groups that you'll keep at TCNJ during that week and then for me at least things really picked up once classes started so I didn't have as much time to go out and meet new friends so welcome week is really going to be your time to shine. There's also so many clubs at TCNJ they have a club fair 
I think they might have had multiple fairs, but you'll always have an opportunity to join something and just because you don't join it like your first week at TCNJ doesn't mean you're not going to have that opportunity uh, opportunity later in the semester. Pretty much everybody I knew at TCNJ was involved in something outside of just classes. Uh, a lot of people were involved in sports like frisbee, lacrosse, I was in volleyball, um, people were in uh, education clubs, they have a lot of different education clubs, um, stuff related to your major. A lot of those will help you find a job in the future, give you multiple opportunities that you can take advantage of, um, and so many other things that I can't even think of. I think my first real weekend at college, um, I ended up going paddle boarding with the outdoors club. That was so much fun. They also have like trips where you can go to New York, Philly, uh, camping at the beach. They always have stuff posted on the bulletin boards in the residence halls. So every week you'll have some something to do. They also have group workouts. So there's different kinds of workouts that you can sign up for. You can do a swimming lesson, maybe jazzercise, something like that. The hip sugar. Come on and shake that cute little booty of yours. Ow! So you can do workouts with a group. Um, I'm pretty sure they're free too. So if you need like that motivation, you want to get fit, go to one of those, go to yoga, meet some new people, go to an art class, a dancing class. You got so many opportunities, just take advantage of them. I completely underestimated how much goes on at TCNJ. I think I already said it, but I don't think I ever, I ever had a boring weekend. I always had something to do. Um, whether it's offered by the college or something that students are throwing, there's always something to do on or off campus. Um, oh, and TCNJ has kind of got some clout. They are able to pull in so many awesome speakers. They had Steve O come, they had David Dober come to the school, Megan Stallion, uh, Sal from Impractical Jokers, and that was all just my freshman year before COVID hit. Oh, I'm getting tired. I think I said this before, TCNJ is what you make of it. They will give you so many opportunities to have fun and learn new things and try new things. All you gotta do is look for them and take advantage of them. For studying, as I said, like a lot of the dorm halls have a little common area that people like to study in. The people are usually pretty um, understanding and respectable. They understand that it's late at night and you've got a final the next morning. They also have the library here. Um, if you've gone on a tour at TCNJ, they probably told you. The first floor is kind of like chatty. They have the cafe in there, so it's kind of noisy-ish, but it's not bad. I do a lot of my work down there because I like to have background noise. The second floor is a bit quieter. The third floor is even more quiet. And then the fourth floor is like dead silent. Those are the people that need to cram. Those people got something due soon. And they also have a lot of study rooms for you. So, and it's cool, like they're glass study rooms so you can see people around you, but you're in your own little quiet bubble where you can just get your work done. And a lot of them have, maybe even all of them, have whiteboards in them for you to study. So people that have like group projects or um, just need like an extra quiet place to study and spread out, you'll be able to get into one of those rooms. I feel like the student center is a bit more noisy, at least during lunchtime when everybody's getting their food because um, they have like, I never really went there that often. They have a lot of different food stations. I think they have like sushi, pizza, burgers. You can customize your own burger and a bunch of other stuff. So a lot of people get food there and they also have traditions, the restaurant. Um, not saying it's like top of the line, but it's not bad food. Um, and I go there when I want to treat myself sometimes. Um, for like lunch and I'll do lunch in tradition or I'll do homework in traditions and then when it's not busy with people trying to get their meals um, a lot of people will study there so that's cool too so originally I had filmed the dining options segment but that video kind of got deleted so I'm just gonna quickly redo it for you so that you don't miss out on this information. On campus, the main dining hall is Eikhoff Hall. We call it Ike. There, it's kind of like a buffet style. You have a bunch of different options when you walk in. They have pizza, burritos, I think it's Chinese food. Um, this place called The Grill. They have 
vegan food and like I'm gonna call it your basic meal of the day section. So you have a lot of different options. It was kind of hit or miss, not gonna lie, but they always had those constants. So I would like get pizza, grilled chicken, uh, chips and guac, um, if there wasn't anything else that I didn't like. And then they also have like a salad bar and a cereal bar. So you can always eat from there. Oh, and they have a sandwich station, which I don't think I ever used because I'm not a big sandwich person, but you can go there. I've heard that. Ike sandwiches are the superior sandwiches on ca campus, but I can't attest to that. So you'll have to decide for yourself. All the food there is unlimited, but for me, I got the lowest, the least expensive meal plan. So I believe I had like four swipes, four times I could go into Ike off each day. I've never exceeded that. I probably went in twice, if that, but you can eat all the food you want once you're in there. For lunchtime, I would normally go to one of the cafes on campus. They have one in the library and one in the education building. Since I was pretty much already at the education building a lot of the time because I would either have a class before or after I ate, I would go there and I would get my breakfast sandwich which you can customize and a coffee every day. A lot of people also got sushi. They have pre-made sandwiches, fruit, uh, chips, soups, stuff like that. And the ladies that work there are so nice they're the sweetest ladies ever they also have uh t-dubs which is like your fried food station i believe they're open until either 1 or 2 a.m um the ike off the main hall they're open until 9 p.m on weekdays and 8 p.m on weekends that might be backwards i think i'm right then you also have traditions restaurant and the other options in the stud but that's usually only open for lunch and you'll have something called meal points so on your tcnj id you'll use that to pay for your food and it's it's basically like money but like they call it points and you pay with those points for each meal they also have campus town um so you can't use your meal points there but you yeah so um there's campus town you can't use your meal points there but you can use your own money to go there they have chinese food indian food panera i think they have a pizza place um the cafe uh insomnia cookies i used to go there to take a break from late night studying they're open until 3 a.m so if you want a hot cookie and ice cream that's your place to go and it's really nice having it there because it's a quick walk you don't have to take a bus to go get some late night snacks and it's a good break from the usual food that you might have a lot on campus so when i visited tcnj for the first time i was not completely sold i'm not the kind of person though that would be selling it like this if i didn't completely believe everything i was telling you i truly do love tcnj but of course it's not the same for everybody. Um, not every single person I met at TCNJ is in love with it. Some people even wanted to transfer, but I also know a lot of people that um, are transferring to TCNJ instead of the college that they thought was perfect for them. So just do what's perfect for you. I wanted to kind of share some of the experiences I've had because I want people to have the same experience at TCNJ that I'm having because I would have never expected to be as in love with this college as I am. Um, so I think I made the right decision for myself, but make the right decision for you too. A fun tip, good tip, what I did in high school my senior year, since I want to be a high school teacher, I asked a lot of my teachers what their experience was in college where did they go did they like it did they like the program did they like the teacher what's the best option and talking to them helped me to eliminate some schools and look closer at schools like tcnj so if you want to be a high school teacher or even elementary ed talk to your teachers they already went through it they have good tips to give you. I hope this helped some people. I know I would have loved to see a video like this on TCNJ because I feel like there's not a lot of really in-depth YouTube videos out about um, the campus life and stuff like that. I think in the future, if this does well, I might choose to do some more in-depth videos about like dorm life, um, each dorm, what you can prepare for if you want to come to TCNJ your freshman year. 
and I hope that you guys make the decision that is right for you in this exciting time of your life when you get to apply to college and choose a place. It was so exciting for me and I hope that you liked this video. Thank you all. Bye.